So we're back with another video on how to make the grow quilt. You can see it right behind me. And this is part of the grow sew along. So you can find that at suzyquilts.com. We have tons of blog posts, videos, tutorials, photos, all the stuff. Step by step, how to make this awesome quilt behind me. So in today's video, we are going to assemble our quilt top. So we've already pre-washed our fabric, we've cut our strips, we've assembled our blocks, and now we're gonna take those blocks and we're going to sew them together to create that beauty right behind me. So this is a medallion quilt, which means it starts with a center block and then it grows from the center out, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if at any point you get kind of tired, you can always just stop and call it a placemat or a baby quilt or a throw quilt, or a wall hanging, or whatever. Or you could just let it grow indefinitely and um, tent your whole backyard. You could do that. So I'm gonna take you down to my cutting mat and I'm gonna show you how I start assembling these blocks. It's a really fun process and let me tell you, it takes no precision. You do some sewing, you do some trimming, and then you just move on. Let me show you. So here I have my block A. And let's see, it is about six inches. You can see that right here. Well, if I look at the quilt schematic on page 10 for the throw quilt, because I'm making the throw quilt, um, I know that this center block needs to be cut to five and a half inches. So I'm going to trim that up. And I like to line up my block with the lines of the ruler rather than the lines of the, um, the cutting mat. But you know, either way works. Okay, so I have that side trimmed up and now I'm going to line up five and a half with the ruler. Sometimes I need to double check. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. Five and a half. Why does that look so small? One, two, three, four, <laughs> that's four and a half. Okay, people. <laughs> um, you're probably shouting at your camera, wait, no, don't do it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five and a half. <laughs> Alrighty, now we make our cut. And what's nice about this quilt is that all of your blocks are um, meant to have wiggle room. So now I trimmed it so it's nice and perfect. Okay, step two, I have this little piece of lint I'm trying to get off. Step two is to sew block B to block A. Well, my block B is 190 inches. Okay, do you see that? So in the end of it, I got a little crazy. It's just kind of wonky. So what I'm gonna do is obviously not sew 190 inches to this tiny little five and a half inch block. So I'm just going to kind of slice off this jaggedy weird edge of mine. Okay. And I'll set this aside. And this, let's see, this goes on the left side. I have some fraying. The left side. And I'm gonna take my ruler and without cutting more of that block, I'm just going to cut off a little extra. So I have a little, maybe, I don't know, quarter inch on each side. You can cut off, you know, just a little extra. Let me lift up my ruler so you can see what I'm saying. So that's not perfectly lined up. That's exactly how I want it. All right, so now I'm gonna flip right sides together and I'm gonna put it this way so you can actually see the overhang. Do you see that overhang? And this is where I pin. And I have my, let's see, I have my pins right here. And I just throw a couple pins in there. And I didn't pin when I was sewing my blocks together, but now that I'm sewing my quilt top together, I'm gonna pin. So I'm gonna take this to my machine, sew a quarter inch seam right here, iron it, and come right back. Okay, so now we have block A sewn to block B, and it's looking a little bit raggedy on those edges. So I'm going to trim them up. 
I'm gonna square things up with my ruler and I'm going to trim up both edges so that they are square enough. All right, I'm not gonna say perfectly square. I'm gonna say square enough. So I'm always just kind of looking, okay, we have nice lines. So this, this is a little bit wonky, but you know, I think it's just because I've been uh, tugging on it. So I'm not gonna trim that off because I think if I just pulled it in one direction, it would pretty easily go in the other. Okay, so I have one side. See, I think if I did that, I think that side would be better. And now I have the other lining things up. There we go, oh wait. Lining things up. I'm gonna go kind of around my tripod so this is gonna be a gonna look kind of awkward. It's always better to cut away from you if you can. Okay, did we get that? There we go. Okay, so now we have our blocks A and our block B. Next up, we have block C on the bottom. So that is this right here. And again, I have kind of a raggedy edge. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did before, and I'm going to try to save as much of this block as possible. I'm just gonna clean up this edge. Okay. Now, kind of line it up. Awesome. I'm gonna give myself just a smidge of extra space. So I'll trim that later. Cool. Can you see how this is coming together? And if at any point you are getting to a place where your block is too big for your cutting mat and this is getting awkward, um, use the schematics on pages nine through 14, but just add maybe a half an inch so you have that little extra you know, you could even just add a quarter inch. You have that little extra space on the sides. So now I'm gonna flip right sides together and I'll flip this like this, just so you can see that extra wiggle room on the sides. And then I'm gonna pin and keep going. That's all there is to it. You just keep doing the same thing as it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is one of those patterns where I, you know, just sit back and relax and let the process unfold. You know, don't worry too much about perfection. Just kind of slice and cut and make it fit. And that is totally good enough. Mm -hmm.